Hi there, my name is Steve and in this video I'm going to provide a little tool that you can use for optimizing your game's performance, uh, specifically for scenarios where you have objects that are far away from the player and you just want them to be disabled or far away from the camera, maybe they're off screen and you just want to use like a, a simple distance check so if like there's like a hundred lights that are 50 meters away from the camera you don't want those on because they don't need to be on. Uh, they're not visible by the camera. And the same is true for things like particle effects or maybe AI enemies, just different things that you have in your scene that may be considered dynamic. For example, they're consuming system resources and they're not visible to the user. So what I've done to, to kind of fix this situation, at least for my own project. Um, that was the case, actually. We had a lot of particles and lights and AI enemies that were just in the scene by default, and that's just the way the game was designed. So if there's all of these enemies near the middle or the end of the level, and they're consuming resources, the idea is to just turn them off until the player gets close to them, and then that's when we would turn them on. And this allowed us to Basically, in our specific case, where we had a top-down game, in some of our worst performing scenes, this let us double our performance. And it didn't really come at much of a cost, and it was very easy to set up. So this is a, a system that I recently wrote, and you can use this in your own projects. I've actually created a GitHub repository. So let's go ahead and switch over to Unity. So I have an example optimization project. This is a brand new project. I'm using 2019.1. So this is required for the scripting API that's used for this package. And in order to get this package, you can come over to my GitHub repo that I set up. And this is the URL. So I'm gonna provide a link in the description and basically what it is is a package that you can import, but really that package consists of four scripts. And this is just a short video tutorial to show you how to use this package. And maybe if your game needs a similar type of optimization as mine, this will come in handy. So uh, to get started, what you will do is just come to this page and this little green code button that has the downward pointing arrow Click that and press download zip. And this is the package file that you'll need. So we'll just move this to the desktop. And from here, I will just extract all. And inside of this zip, you get the master folder, which has the scripts folder in case you just want to manually set up your own scripts. but there is a Unity package that you can just import into your project, and there's also a README file. So the README file will talk about the project requirements, and we'll go over this in just a moment. So the first thing to do is just grab the object distance toggle Unity package and drag it and drop it into your assets folder. This will import the demo example and the scripts and a README. Okay, so right after you import, you'll notice you have a few errors. And if we take a look at the README, I have a, um, so the first thing is use a project 2019.1 or higher. The second is we need to configure a few project settings. Uh, specifically, we need to install burst 1.2.3 and set the API compatibility level to .NET 4.x. So let's go ahead and open the window package manager and from here we can find burst and the version that we want is 1.2.3 it doesn't show in this window but this is the verified version that works with 2019.4 so it's the most stable version all right so once burst completes its installation the error should go away and we're actually ready to use the project but um, 
we want to make sure we set the API compatibility level. So I'll do edit project settings. And then I will select player. And here I will set the API compatibility level as .NET 4.x. And that's about it. So the next step, if you want to build in a standalone player with this, you just got to make sure you install the Windows SDK and VC++ toolkit from the Visual Studio installer. And that's about it. Um, really quick, there is one more note here. I want to go ahead and open this demo scene. We're using the built-in render pipeline and we're using deferred rendering for this example. So this scene is designed to be a stress test. And I have a lot of lights and particles in the scene. So when you're using forward rendering, you just don't get to use all of the lights. There's a limit of how many lights can affect any object. And you could change that limit, but what I did was I, I went to deferred rendering instead. So if we go to edit, project settings, and then graphics. This is where you can set the rendering path. And by default, we're using the ultra quality level. So I'm just gonna come over here to the high tier three, and I'm gonna change the rendering path from forward to deferred. You, now you can also, in your quality settings, if you wanna stay on forward, you can do something like increase the pixel light count, which I, I don't really recommend doing. And you could see that those lights start actually doing something. Um, but that's not really what we want to do. The, the best thing to do if you're using a lot of lights in your scene is to use the deferred rendering path. And by default, uh, deferred rendering is just a much better option to support having a large amount of lights in your scene. So in this scene, we have Let's see, 3,400 objects, 3,402 objects. So we have a lot of objects. Each of these objects is a prefab. And on this prefab, I have two lights and a cube and a particle system. And then I have an object distance toggle script with the distance set to 25. So by default, let me go ahead and disable the object distance toggle manager and I will play the scene and we're going to take a look at the performance of the scene so the main thread is taking about 32 33 milliseconds to process and we're running at about 30 frames per second if I take a look at the scene view it's uh, a worse frame rate uh, because we're looking at more objects and we can see that there's a slowdown. The, the scene is basically filled with rotating cubes and lights and particle systems. And only a few of them are actually within view of the camera. So if I turn on the object distance toggle manager, which is just a prefab that has the object distance toggle manager script on it, so the main components of the system are the prefab with the object distance toggle manager script and the object distance toggle script, which gets attached to objects in your scene. So when these objects are en enabled during start, they're going to register with the object distance toggle manager. And that's basically how this works. So let's go ahead and press play and we'll see what kind of performance improvement we get. So all of these objects are just set to, to a distance of 25. And it does take a little bit of time, additional time to start up, but you can see we're able to reduce our main thread usage down to from the 33 to about 14 milliseconds, and we've increased our frame rate from 30 to about 70. And if we take a look at our scene view, we can see that only the 
objects within 25 meters of the assigned origin point, which is just this point right here, which is basically in the center of the camera, only these objects are enabled. So if I were to take my camera and move it around, you could see objects are turned on and off and it's pretty seamless. So this is how we get that performance improvement and you can go ahead and use this for your game. And if you're using a top-down game, you, you'll probably get a pretty good performance improvement if you have a lot of dynamic objects. Or if you just want objects that are far away from the camera to always be disabled, this is a good option. There is also a little debug, so you could check the processing time. So I'll go ahead and I'll enable that. And we could see that it's about 0 0.5 milliseconds. So it's a half of a millisecond processing time for this script. So the script has actually very little overhead for the amount of work that it's doing. Anyway, uh, this is just a quick optimization tutorial and a tool that you guys can use to hopefully improve your project performance. Um, this system uh, if, is actually a, a very simple job, so I'm just going to go through it really quickly to kind of tell you what's going on here. And if you're interested, you can try to improve it for different use cases for your scene. This is actually uh, the basic framework that I use for writing custom LOD components for some of my other projects. So um, for example, I have an LOD level and by default, everything is set to not set. And then it's either cold or it's using LOD zero, but you can come in here and you can add multiple LODs and then inside of your, your actual objects, you can add those LOD distance values. And if we go back to the scripts, let's, uh, let's take a look at the job that's actually being processed. So the, the job is basically just past the player position, uh, the distance to player array, the LOD zero distance, and the LOD level array, which is basically what's used inside of the manager to determine what level of LOD should be used. Um, and really all we're doing is we're doing a, a very simple distance check and it's a iJob parallel for transform. So th this to me is actually the most useful type of job because I can do simple things like a distance check and, and have it toggle on or off all of the objects that register to it. And I could create different versions of this type of system. Um, so if we take a look at the manager, basically all we're doing is we have, it's a singleton instance. So uh, that's created during wake. And then if there are enough indexes in that, that register to it, basically more than zero, we're basically just going to create this job that passes that information over in to the job. And then once the job completes, we, we execute on it. So we check the, the LOD that's set. So if the job is saying that the object is too far away, then it, it's going to be cold. We're going to call set cold. Otherwise, if it's set to LOD zero, we're going to set LOD zero. And in here is where you can do your various distance checks. So back to the job really quick, we're just checking to see if the distance to the player from that object is greater than the LODs distance zero. And if it is, we're going to call it. So we could just add the other distance checks in here into this job and set various LOD levels. And then when you go back to the manager, you could check those LOD levels right after the job completes. And in this case, I'm just using LOD zero and cold. And all that's doing is basically setting the object active or inactive. And for different types of objects, you can have multiple LOD levels. And if it's a light, for example, you can, 
make references to that light component and you could set different LODs for the light. So let's say your, your light should have no shadows if it's a certain distance away. And that would be, let's say LOD three before it gets cold. And then you could have a LOD two where it has hard shadows and LOD one where it gets soft shadows and so on and so forth. And you could do that with all different kinds of components. Anyway, that's basically how this system works. And if you're interested in it, just check it out on GitHub and bring it into your project, give it a try, and hopefully it'll give you some performance improvements. Anyway, thanks for checking out this video. I'll see you in another one. Bye.